So you ended up with malaria and jungle rot? Uh, no, no. Yellow jungles. And what's that? It's a liver disease. Like hepatitis? Huh? Like hepatitis? Like hepatitis? It is hepatitis. Oh, you got hepatitis in the Philippines? Yellow jaundice and hepatitis is the same thing. Ew, gross. And, uh, well, careful. <laughs> they tore up and down and they cured me, but... Well, that's something that you're never cured of. You carry with you forever. Yeah, and they tell me that I always have the... Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, not the symptoms, but uh, the actual germ or no. virus or whatever. So, what was that like? Did you like have a high fever and it actually turn yellow? Well, yeah. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, when I left Mindanao to go up. was when I had the uh, uh, hepatitis and the jungle rot. What's jungle rot? Well, <laughs> I don't know if you can see. That, that like scar there? Wait, wait, let me get it. Let me zoom in. <laughs> okay. There should be three or four of them. Well, I see one of them. Okay, so that mm -hmm. that's left over from your jungle rot? Yeah. That's a gift from the Philippines? So how do you get it? I don't I think what happened was the, the boots that we were issued was like uh, like a regular pair of high top boots, except that they uh, sewed a cuff on it so that you could put your pant legs mm -hmm. inside the cuff and that would keep the mosquitoes and bugs and stuff from crawling down in, from causing you any problems and uh, keep the dirt from getting on a cuff. When you walk, would chafe, chafe the uh, the leg, and once the jungle rot started, it would just keep rotting. I mean, it rots. So through. is it is it like a a bacteria that got in there and just like started eating you up? No. no, no, no. What happened? Did you get like all scabby or infected? Or? No, it wouldn't get scabby. It would just be uh, moist. Like a, a boil that's opened. And it just wouldn't heal? And it just wouldn't heal on its own. Oh. So when they you know, sent me up by uh, plane to uh, Mindanao, or to Luzon, mm -hmm. which is where. Another island. Uh, the main island. Mm -hmm. They put me in this uh, tent hospital. Like on MASH? Huh? Like on MASH? Similar. And uh, they uh, had me sit in a tub of uh, uh, antibiotic. Mm -hmm. I forget what they call it now. Regular. Mm. Like iodine? No. Like, alcohol? Rubbing alcohol? Huh? Like rubbing alcohol? No. It was, uh, uh, God, I can't think what But it was some antiseptic. At any rate, this medicine was like, it, they give me baths in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so you had the jungle rot all over, or just on no, your legs? No, just on my legs. But they had to give you it to your whole body? They give me dance 
so that it would all be covered. Mm. And uh, I was in there. We were, my outfit was coming up to Luzon to, uh, we were going to prepare for the main jump off to Japan. We were going to invade Japan. Well, while I was in this hospital, Germany surrendered, and we set off the atomic bombs. So aren't you glad you weren't in Japan? <laughs> Japan surrendered, mm -hmm. and it wasn't long after that I, I wouldn't see. On your way home. Uh, on my way home. So you were in the hospital for the end of the war. Big party, huh? Scared the hell out of me. All of a sudden, one night, bullets are flying, I hear them all over. <sighs> and I thought to myself, for Christ's sake, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> making a resurgence or what? And then a the guy comes flying in the tent and says, Japan surrendered, war's <laughs> over. Everybody's firing off their bullets, getting rid of them. We're not going to need them anymore. <laughs> so, what was it like to have hepatitis? Did it hurt, or were you just really sick? What What did it do to you? That was a bright yellow. <laughs> you really were. And I didn't know I had it. I I had gone to the medic for the jungle rock, <coughs> and I'm put aboard this plane to go to Manila, and the army nurse says, when did you come down with uh, the uh, hepatitis? I didn't see anything on your uh, paperwork to say that you had the hepatitis, I thought it was just jungle rot, and I said, well, that's all it was, and if I've got mm, hepatitis, it's something new. And she said, well, we'd better get you up there fast, because yeah. you're you getting as yellow as mm, can be. And she held up a mirror, and sure enough, my face was just as yellow as it a canary, practically. And nobody had noticed or said anything until her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice bunch of guys you were with, huh? <laughs> I don't know whether I had just turned yellow. Or... <laughs> it's probably a gradual thing, I would imagine. Okay, so the war is over. You're on your way home. You get home. Then what'd you do? Well... When I got home, first got home. Obviously, you made Linda. <laughs> the uh, uh, army told me that uh, they couldn't discharge me until they fixed my teeth because my teeth had gone to plot because I had no dentist over there. Mm -hmm. And so they said, you go on home. Have a vacation, and when we get uh, squared away, and we're getting so many guys in that we've got to schedule somehow to get your teeth taken care because we can't uh, leave you go like that. So I can't win the home, and. Uh, Irene became pregnant, and I went to my family dentist, Dr. Douglas, and I told him what the Army had told me, and he took a look at my teeth, and he said, they screwed you up for a while. He said, the guy who was in charge of dentistry for this area is one of my buddies we went to dental school together years ago. He said, I'm going to call him and I'm going to 
fix it with him that I take care of your teeth instead of the army. And the army pays for it. And I said, that's fine with me. I prefer you to those characters because any time an army doctor or dentist works on me, it hurts. Yeah. And Dr. Douglas, he, he was on the dean. He took care of Vine, Jim, Mom, Walt. I think even Millie, I mentioned. But I got my teeth taken care of, and I got Linda Jean paid for by the Army <laughs> because I was still legally in the Army and had not been discharged, and there was something called the uh, intermittent something or other management act that as long as you were still technically in service, the government would pay for the, the maternity. Well, that's good. <coughs> so where were you guys living? Uh, that house on uh, Kenyon? Uh, Irene and Rose had an apartment on, I think it was Ninth and University. And uh, when I came back, uh, Irene and I took over the apartment. <coughs> and Rose got another apartment in the Martinique, which was the apartment building which is long gone. But it was <laughs> over in the U District? Huh? But it was over in the U District? No. Oh, University Downtown. Okay, I gotcha. University Street. I gotcha. Uh, well, there's University Avenue Street now. I think, if I remember right, they made it a dead end street because of the, some construction that they did. And they made it into a dead end street, and so all, all that disappeared. Hmm. I think it was. I don't know what it was. But at any rate. So that's that's where you brought Linda home. Was she born at home or in a hospital? No. Uh, Neither one. We <laughs> we. She was born in the hospital. Okay. Uh, <laughs> which doctor's hospital? Doctor's hospital, which was on Ninth and, and Madison. Okay. And I don't know. I don't think it's there now. I don't anymore. think so. Mm -mm. But it was a brand new hospital. Well, that's good. <laughs> she was one of the first to be born. It's a nice, brand new hospital. Very cool. And. Uh, We had moved from the apartment. Maybe we let her, Rose, keep the apartment. Because one of our gals from the dance hall was living in Fremont. beside the canal, mm -hmm. and she uh, had given up the apartment that she had, and we heard about it, so we took over her apartment, and that's where we brought Linda Jean home to, until we found a big rat running across my feet Ew. into a hole under the sink. And Irene, and Irene said, said, I'm not raising my child here. <laughs> Irene says, I don't want Linda Jean and 
in that apartment. Yeah. Don't so, blame her a bit. <laughs> so then I found a house across the street from where Mom and Walt lived. So I rented in. Is that the one you showed me in Skyway? No, no. Okay. It was a big old house. And the rent was right. And so what were you doing then after you left the Army? What was your job when you first got out of the Army? Well, I think I started out with uh, what the heck was the name? An outfit still out on the East Marginal Way. They made uh, welding gas. I went. I went to. Uh, uh, the outfit that uh, found jobs for GIs, mm -hmm. uh, state and industrial, and there was uh, probably 500 guys that were looking for work, and I knew it was going to take forever to find a job. Yeah. So I was stood outside the main door and I saw a guy in a business suit pull up. So before he got out of his car, I reached around and tapped on his window. And I said, if you're here looking for somebody for a job, I'm your man. I'm ready. I'll go with you right now, wherever the job is, and I promise I'll do a good job. And so he said, okay. And I climbed in his car, took me out on East Martin Way. It was uh, welding gas. Mm -hmm. Forget what they call it now. Union Carbide Company was in the company. Mm -hmm. Union Carbide Company makes welding gas and acetylene and oxygen and whatever to, for uh, welding. Mm -hmm. Plus, they also are the company that makes pressed stone uh, tires, antifreeze oh. for cars. And as I found out on the job, the dregs from the making of settling gas. Is that the welding gas? Is what makes the antifreeze. So mm -hmm. when they make settling gas, all the stuff that goes into making it has to be dumped into it. A barrel, and the barrels were, I mean, they were 500 pound barrels. They're bigger now. And I didn't last an awful long at the job, <laughs> but that's where I lost my toenails. Both, both feet, and I wound up, I bend the barrel over and then try to roll it. That's the way. The guys that were doing it were doing it. And one guy had been promoted to a different job, and that was my new job. It was rolling and, barrels around. And I really worked at it, and I think I lasted about a week or so. <laughs> and uh, did they fire you, or did you quit? No, they hired me, and I... No, I said, did they fire you? Oh, no, they didn't fire me. You quit? <laughs> uh, I quit because uh, uh, Rose, Lavander's husband, uh, brother, owned a plating shop, and 
he was running it for the guy that actually owned it. Mm -hmm. But he was partner, and he was looking for a guy to work in, to learn the plating business. <laughs> and that sounded a lot better than rolling around those barrels. Better than rolling mm -hmm. those barrels. And uh, I mean, I I tore up my hands something horrible in the plating business because you're sticking your hands in uh, poison. Ew. So and if you get what a is, scratch, what is plating like? Putting gold plate and silver plate on top of stuff, or I don't understand. Yeah. Silver plate mostly, but mm -hmm. they did gold plating as well. And he promised me, um, what was it, a nickel raise from what you were making at the barrel place for every month, I think. Mm. until I became a journeyman. And so I signed up with the union and I became a, a uh, apprentice. I paid my dues every month. And after I'd worked for him for about a year and a half, maybe two years, the uh, guy that owned it, uh, the print, the plating company, mm -hmm. uh, decided he was going to retire. So he sold out to Clarence, uh, who was Rose's husband's brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, after about pretty close to two years apprenticeship, and you have to serve four to become a journeyman. Mm -hmm. I was up to, I think I started at a dollar five an hour, and I was up to was that a good wage or a dollar thirty something like that. Was that good money? Huh? Was that good money at the time? Or? Yeah, that wasn't bad. Because of course, to me, that yeah. sounds like nothing. You know, yeah. that's that's a loaf of bread. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, barrel job was one dollar and I started out here at the dollar five and I was up to a good dollar twenty five which mm -hmm. I thought was darn good money. Yeah. Well you were able to support your family. Well the thing was that Irene was working too as mm -hmm. a telegraph operator. Right. And I was working. So we were living pretty mm -hmm. pretty good. Okay, so but, the guy sold out. But I think I was up to about dollar thirty-five or so when he told me that uh, he wasn't making enough money to afford another journeyman, mm -hmm. and that he would keep me in at a dollar twenty-five, but he couldn't uh, afford to keep give me the nickel every three months. And it pissed me off.